cameras, quote, out of context. They take a tiny sliver of reality and turn it into a picture. When I think about a project, I think about something that we are going to work on, right? We work on projects. I also think about the connotation of labor, right? That same idea that we're going to work towards something, something cohesive. Um, however, when we talk about photo projects, we have to know what that project generally is about or an idea that it's about right before we begin. So if I had a photo project about dogs, I know that I'm going to be photographing dogs. That's going to be my project. And usually when we talk about a photo project, going back to the idea of labor, we think about the idea of deadlines. So we give ourselves kind of arbitrary deadlines as to when this should be completed. Uh, a week, a month, a year, 20 pictures, 30 pictures, 100 pictures, a book, uh, a zine, something of that nature. Something where I know that when I have this amount of work in this collection, I will be completed or it will feel complete or I will abandon the project at some point because I am done to a certain degree. It's That's what I think about when I think about photo projects. And I kind of already know the outcome because if I'm talking about a photo project about dogs, I know that I'm trying to photograph dogs. And it could be dogs jumping. Or, or you've seen that photographer who has the dogs jumping in the pool, uh, grabbing balls of uh, tennis balls out of the pool, or the other photographer that throws snacks at the dog and, you know, they make funny faces and um, they sell the prints on Etsy or whatever. Make a calendar. Who cares, right? So, to a certain degree, they're closed off from experimentation. Right, like if I'm doing a photo project on dogs, um, chasing a tennis ball underwater, I'm not going to make pictures of dogs chasing cats. I'm also not going to make pictures of cats. I'm going to make pictures of dogs chasing tennis balls. And I'm, and I'm making an extreme example here, of course, right? Because we could talk about um, vague terms like street photography, right? We could go out and try to capture some pictures of street, whatever that means. I really don't like that term either. And I'll make another case for that in another video street pictures or, or whatever that means to you um, projects come from ideas we're thinking about what we want to see right I think so that's why we're working on the project because we want to see the ultimate you know, conclusion of that project as a photographer and to me that feels very sterile planned and bureaucratic and I don't like working like that it feels rigid and I don't think that that's how most good photographers work. And I'll, I'll make my case for that. I think that there's an alternate way of presenting this information that I see lacking in a lot of content on YouTube particularly. Or even at the universities I've been at, there's always students working on photo projects. shouldn't be that way. When we're talking about photo projects, it almost feels like we're coming at this from the perspective of a lawyer, right? And as an artist, I am, or I think I'm the furthest thing from a lawyer possible. A lawyer is sensible, practical, rational, and logical, okay? Those ideas to me, yes, they have a place within the art making um, practice, but 
they seem to me to be more along the lines of the synthetic arts. That is, where you synthesize something from an idea you already have, which is sculpture, painting. Actually, photography is the only art that kind of works differently from those, or has the ability to work differently from those if we allow the medium to do what it's best at. I will go back and I will address that. Some photographers do make pictures like paintings. They set everything up and everything has to be perfect. The lighting, I think Gregory Crudson does some of this stuff and his stuff is pretty good. I like it, it's interesting. But he's more of a painter working with the photographic process than what is innate to the abilities of the photographic medium or that I find more interesting because it's an it's more of an inner he's synthesizing everything he's creating everything whereas the, cam the camera is capable of making interesting pictures without any of that right what is the alternative to a project a photo project the alternative to the photo project is the muse right and we know what the muses are ever you know since ancient greece maybe even before ancient greece um, the Holy Spirit even, right? It's, an, it's almost a divine inspiration that is inexplainable. It is unattainable by our own work, right? So it's something that is beyond us, that is guiding us. It's something that inspires it is, the muse is a certain curiosity or an interest. It is, it's coming from a place of questions instead of ideas, which I think is an important distinction. It's not working from the idea that I will finish this project when X, Y, and Z criteria are met. It is a question that says, I don't know what I'm looking for, but I'm interested in this thing. And I'm, I'm going to try to discover this thing. I'm going to try to understand this thing. And I think that's a big distinction so it's something to be explored we're seeking when we talk about muses it's something that we're seeking to learn from it's something that's open to to novel ideas whereas the project is closed off from experimentation right you're not going to take pictures of a dog chasing a cat if you're photographing pictures of a dog chasing tennis balls underwater it's open to novel ideas so i see a dog I take a picture there's a rat carrying a piece of pizza. Of course I'm going to photograph that because I'm not constrained by this idea, this notion that I'm out here trying to work on this particular set of facts to accomplish this goal. No, I'm out here trying to understand the world, trying to see, trying to... That's the key here. We're trying to see, which is what the camera does. The camera sees. So a muse reveals itself through observation. We as artists, as, as photographers, have to be vulnerable to the innocence that we have to kind of embrace. We have to engage the world with a certain amount of innocence and vulnerability and curiosity. These are all traits that children have. These are not things that adults, or you would say a rational person, operates from, but this is the for me at least what makes photography interesting i can engage in with the world and have absolutely no idea I, when i wake up in the morning i have no idea what pictures are awaiting for me i have no idea what what pictures could present themselves and that is powerful for me and there's going to be thousands of garbage photographs right but when you get that one picture and you know it's good and man it's 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 something different there's something different about it okay yeah you're looking through your negatives you shot 10 rolls and you got 360 pictures right you've got 10 rolls of, of 36 or 35 exposures but you get you get two or three that are different for some reason and they're better than all the others and you can't explain it and then how good does that feel right that's an act of discovery of curiosity that you can't explain all you were doing was observing right and going back to the analogy of the lawyer this is more so how the poet works 
the poet is impulsive. It's passionate. It's naive. Right? I think that's just so much more liberating and freeing. Um, and I think that that's how most really good photographers work. And when I let me qualify that. I am talking about people like Lee Friedlander, people like Gary Winogrand, uh, Minor White. They were just interested in something and they photographed it. And if it happened to have a stream of interrelated connectedness, you could begin to discover the muse, such as Gary Winogrand's book, Women are beautiful. I don't think you could make that book again now because of how the social, just the, so, the entire social construct has changed and the male gaze and the, you, you know what I'm talking about. However, for Gary Winogrand, when he saw a woman walking down you know the street in New York when he was where he was working he was interested he was just a guy and he was interested and he took a picture and some of them happened to be really interesting pictures they were good pictures and so when he looks back at those 360 negatives and he finds two or three pictures that just so happened to be about women or about a woman then he starts to put those together and he says, oh, hey, look, this is kind of cool. This is kind of, um, it has a seriality or a serial nature to it. But he didn't go out just to photograph women on the streets of New York. He was photographing absolutely everything. And so that's the distinction between projects and the muse. Gary Winogrand clearly had a muse. He was inspired and curious and interested and impulsive and passionate and naive about women. And that comes through in the work because it's 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 you can tell there's a, a curious interest there. Okay? And and it's not always just the male gaze. Let's let's just address that real quick. It's not always just that. It's that he had a genuine interest in women. And, and, and he, did he like women? Of course he did. Yes, he did. Um, he was interested in them, you know, of course. But, that's, but this is just an example. This is how I think many photographers work. Like Lee Friedlander, he's always shooting everything. He could, he could make a book about... You could almost name uh, potted plants, you know, flowers. He's got plant, you know, books about that. Um, but he's always just photographing everything, and I think that's the. I, I struggle with the word correct, because obviously there's more than one way to skin a cat. But I find it to be the most myself the most interesting way to address photography is to photograph everything. And then sort it out in post. Sort it out when you're looking at your negatives. See what's interesting in your negatives later on. You know? Let me go ahead and close this whole video out. So, projects, I'm not a fan of. Let's try to understand what our muses are. And what are my muses? Let's go ahead and talk about my muses. I've, I've shared a couple of pictures on my channel so far. One of them is the night. I'm interested in the night. What does that mean? I'm not even quite sure. And I've made portraits of people in the night. I've made architectural large format photographs of buildings in the night. I've used flash to work in the night. I've done a lot of things in the night, guys. And I'm still interested in the night. Why? I'm not sure. And I'm never going to find out, I think. I'm just, it's something that I'm interested in investigating. And that's what I'm trying to motivate you guys to do. What are you interested in? Even if you don't understand it. 
What else am I interested in? Well, one of my favorite pictures is a bunch of palm trees. Actually, they're plantain trees. And they're swaying in the wind. And I, you know, and, well, I don't live in a sub, you know, tropical <laughs> place anymore. And that's been really difficult for me because I haven't been able to find any more uh, plantain trees to photograph. But will I photograph trees? Yes. Will I try to photograph the wind? Yes, of course. And we'll just see where that goes. What else? I like old American cars. I've got a bunch of pictures of old American. I'm talking about the ugly cars from the 80s, the square ones. I love those cars. And so I'll keep photographing those. I love Americana. I love everything that is American, uh, you know, apple pie flags. Obviously, The Americans is one of my favorite books. So um, things like things like that that are classically American when we think about them. Yeah, I love that stuff. I love landscape pictures. I love pictures of trees. Um, I think those are some of my muses. I think, right? Because I'm still discovering. I'm still seeking to learn. Um, so let's go. Let, let's talk about John Sharkowski, right? For a second. Let's move on. I'm going to try to close this out with some John Sharkowski. He said that um, and I'm going to paraphrase here. The photographer is the greatest at quoting out of context. So what does that mean, to quote out of context? Obviously, photographs are always quoting out of context. We don't know what else is going on. All photographs are lies, another Sharkovsky quote. Um, so we're, we're just kind of sampling conversations happening in the world. And by a conversation, I mean snippets of time and light we're just going out there and trying to understand all of these different compositions or structures or I like to call them conversations between time and light because that's what we photographers deal in um, so quoting out of context Does a project quote out of context or does a project create a context for quotes? I think so to a degree. But a muse, a muse lends itself to that because I don't know, I don't understand you. I'm trying. You've inspired me, but I don't know the direction I'm going. I don't understand everything I'm doing. I'm trying to learn. So, guys, 20 minutes in. If you've stuck around for this entire time, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. I will catch you on the next one. Please let me know. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Share this video. I'm pretty sure I'm going to piss a lot of people off with this one. Um, and let me know what you guys think because I don't think many people are talking about this stuff. Check you guys out on the next one. Thanks.